Hello, hello everybody, it's Girl Got Game, and we're back for bad ending number two for Samuel. So, I am in chapter seven, and this is the bad ending that results from picking too many bad options along the way. So we're just gonna do opposite choice day. And we'll start with, do you have any pets? Only some fish at the moment, but we're thinking of getting a dog. Or wait, was that a question for Samuel? Uh... It doesn't matter. My family owns a cockatoo. His name's Woody. All oh, right, this is the option that I hate. <laughs> All right, well, starting off strong. Is Woody's cockatoo big? <laughs> Good one, Cavens. Completely didn't see that coming. Be right back. He, uh, did not come back. <laughs> if I were him, I would not come back. Samuel gets up to throw his tray away, but I can practically feel the annoyance radiating off him. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, Samuel. When you name your cockatoo Woody, how can you not expect me to make a joke out of it? <laughs> He's like, I'm leaving. <laughs> All right. So, um, I think we did it fine last time, right? Yes, I did. So, with some practice, you'll be unstoppable. Don't worry, Samuel. With some practice, we'll improve on your hand-eye coordination so you can be ready for the next time we play. You'll be unstoppable. Mm. Besides, you win some, you lose some. So long as you have fun along the way, that's what matters. <laughs> Alright, I'm not gonna do the laugh, because we did that already. Okay, so this is our big date day. Ugh, which one do I hate the least? I'll do the bottom, I guess. What are you doing here? Um, our date? Did you forget? Nope, not at all. Man, these choices are short and sweet. Um, I don't think this one matters. It does not. I'll just do Grape Cantaloupe. <laughs> Why not? That's an interesting choice. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting that he actually comments on that. So, yeah. It's terrible. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for your honesty. All right. That man, it's so fast. Um... Okay, I look nice. I know. <laughs> wow, and it just like completely skips some things. Samuel, you're so fast, my goodness. Uh, let's try the, what's the song called? Summertime. I thought it suited today's weather. I like it. All right. Um, rate Sammy's looks. I could change the subject or do a 10. Let's, uh, let's change the subject. If Aaron is such a jerk to Peter, maybe you should go out with him. Didn't you hear me? I just said, I know, but consider it. Wouldn't that be the perfect revenge on your ex? It would be delicious revenge, wouldn't it? A mischievous smile curls her lips, and she goes quiet as the fantasy plays out in her head. <sighs> I sigh inwardly and enjoy the silence while it lasts. Maybe that's why she was trying that one night when we were having the, uh, the meeting. And Aaron's like, you couldn't pay me. <laughs> oh no, I gotta be mean and say, I'm putting that in my ear, blurg. I'm not putting that in my ear. Samuel shakes his head, snorting softly as he puts the earbud back in place. What? It's not sanitary to share e earbuds. It's fine. Somehow I feel like it isn't. I keep quiet so Samuel can listen to his music and we merely enjoy one another's silent company. As we usually do. <laughs> Man, that skipped an entire hand-holding scene. Crazy. Um, alright, we are not going to go find Samuel this time. No, I need to stop dwelling on this. Samuel is grieving and needs to be given time and space. 
I can only hope that he's strong enough to get past this on his own. I'm going to go join Susie for dinner. Okay, so we don't seek him out and make our assumptions. Um, I think... What did I do last time? Checking things... Okay, I did. we should be more careful when we got caught by Wiley checking out the thing. We should rethink this escape plan. He pauses. I'm not giving up. I'm getting to that radio tower one way or another. You might not have to. Maybe Mr. Wiley will have changed his mind by tomorrow and he'll let us go. I won't be getting my hopes up. Still, wait on that. I don't want to see anything happen to you. He looks at me for a long moment, and then I skip. Ooh, okay, what happens here when we hold our ground? The bad ending doesn't happen here, so I'm curious. I stand there like a deer in headlights, trying to think of some excuse as to why a bunch of section leaders are meeting at the campground in the middle of the night. Samuel gives me a firm tap on the shoulder, snapping me out of it. What are you doing? Let's get out of here! Right! Okay, so Samuel's the one that makes the call instead. Makes sense. And I'm assuming he'll talk Cadence out of this cockamamie plan. We have to go back for the others. Nah. We should get back to our rooms. Mr. Wiley may go looking there next. But what about everyone else? That sounded like it was Tom who screamed. Not my problem. <laughs> just not- Wow, cold, Samuel! They're just gonna have to help themselves. They've got legs, and they know where their rooms are. I'm sure they'll head back to the lodge on their own, since we can't finish the meeting with Mr. Wiley hanging around. You're right. We'll just end up drawing more attention to ourselves if we go back out looking for them. As for Tom, I'll go check in on him and Peter later. I hope they're okay. Alright. Hmm. Okay. We can do something different this time and see what happens. We're gonna keep the jalapenos. I'd like to keep the jalapenos. Samuel and I are planning to make pepper poppers with them. I understand. Good luck! We'll stick with our dirt pudding then. Okay. Where to next? Hmm. I suppose we could visit Tom and Peter to see if they have anything good. Good idea. I bet Tom has loads of food stowed away in his room. Interesting, so we go here with the jalapenos. The door is open, so we let ourselves in. Peter is peering into a drawer, while Tom kneels in front of the mini-fridge, pulling stuff out. We could throw all my ramen in a pot and cover it with these cheese cubes! We could heat up these hot pockets and wrap them in beef jerky. That might be okay. Samuel gives me such a withering look that I have to stifle a snort. Tom and Peter look up from what they're doing. Hiya! What's up? We're looking for an ingredient that would go well with jalapeno peppers and cream cheese. Got anything good? Uh... Sure, if you consider ramen or beef jerky to be good. I can tell Samuel is just about as thrilled by these options as I am. Uh, we don't have anything to trade, though. That's okay. You can have it for free. Really? Yeah, we've got plenty to go around. Only pick one, though. And we'll use the other for our meal. So, what would you like? Ramen or beef jerky? Samuel, what do you think? I really don't have an opinion. You pick. Hmm... All right, I'm gonna leave this up to the heart of the coin. All right, heads for ramen, tails for beef jerky. Hiya! Heads, all right. Tom, you're gonna have to make something other than your ramen soup thing. We'll take the ramen. Great! Good choice. He unloads a few packages of ramen on me. You got the ramen! The go-to meal of poor college kids all over the world. Thanks. I guess. Later. Have fun, you two. Tom, let's get to work. Roger! Do you think this will go well with the jalapeno peppers and cream cheese? I don't know. 
When my mom makes them, she usually sprinkles toasted breadcrumbs on top. I'm certain someone at band camp must have brought bread with them. <laughs> I brought bread. Here comes trouble. You did? Can we have a slice or two? That depends. On? What will you give us for it? Um, all I have is this ramen Tom gave me. Clark and Olive exchange a glance, their eyebrows raised. Are you intrigued? We could use that. I like it. Okay, we'll take it. Olive whips out a bag of bread. She fishes out two slices and trades it for our ramen, then they go on their way. Okay. Hey, that worked out really well. That worked out splendidly. I was trying to make something gross, but maybe we're going to make it work anyway. Let's take these ingredients to the cafeteria to work on our dish there. All right, pepper poppers, here we come. We head to the cafeteria to concoct our masterpiece. Don't forget to wash your hands. I would never forget. Crap, I'm glad he reminded me. It's all you, Samuel. Work your magic. Samuel gets to work on the pepper poppers using the rusty toaster oven at his disposal. I assist when necessary. When the time is right, I toast our two pieces of bread, crumble them up, and scatter the pieces on the pepper poppers. Can I try one? Let's wait until the banquet. Dang. Don't worry. I'll make sure you're the first to get one. No, thank you. The sun eventually sets and 8 p.m. approaches. Interesting. So because they did it in the kitchen, they didn't have to wait in the room and hang out while uh, Felicity and Susie were doing their thing. Samuel and I keep the pepper poppers in the toaster oven on a low setting so that they remain warm, waiting to remove them into the last possible minute. Then we bring them to the banquet. By the time we get there, most of the band has already congregated and put their dishes on the tables. Some kids look sheepish, while others lift their chins proudly. I'm among the latter as I set the pepper poppers down with a flourish. This looks a lot better than I thought it would. Some of this food actually looks edible. Alright, we'll see. I, hopefully I didn't screw myself out of the bad ending by winning this thing. Because it sounds like we're accidentally on our way to winning it again. Right you are, Samuel! Cadence, will you come with me, please? What? Why me? You can be my fellow judge! You mean... I have to try all of this food? Yup. Too bad Garth isn't here. He would have made a good judge, too. Who should be our number three? I'll be a judge! Perfect! Thanks, Tom. I wish being a judge was optional. I steal my stomach as I'm faced with 20-some different dishes to sample. That one's mine! What did you make? Tom proudly points out a plate of singed Hot Pockets wrapped haphazardly in crumbling beef jerky. Mmm. It's Hot Pockets wrapped in beef jerky. I think everyone can see that, Tom. You got this, Cadence. I believe in you. It was nice knowing you. You had better not be biased in your judgment. The band watches as Mr. Wiley, Tom, and I sample each dish. I take the tiniest bites possible of the more questionable-looking ones, screwing my face up against the taste. The band laughs each time, chattering excitedly amongst themselves. All right. Let's end the sampling with a taste of these pepper poppers. He pops a pepper popper into his mouth, eating it whole. Yo! Holy smokes, that's spicy! Ah! Water! I need water! My tongue is on fire! Through the pain, the flavors are quite good. But oh, the pain! <laughs> Amazing. After dousing our mouths in water, Mr. Wiley pulls me and Tom away from the others. Kiddos, help yourselves to the banquet while the three of us figure out who won. Okay, so here's what I think. He lists off the best dishes. I'm momentarily surprised by his choice, but then realize I have to agree with him. The winners are clear. Sounds good to me. Great. He straightens up and clears his throat. <clears throat> Listen up. The judges have made their decision. In third place, Sabrina and Marion with their yummy Rice Krispie treats. Interesting. Okay. 
Yay! Third place! I suppose. I'll take it. In second place, Cadence and Samuel with their spicy pepper poppers! Okay, so we came second. We got second. We did! Who? We high five. And in first place, with a score of 99.99, .99, Clark and Olive with their delicious tuna noodle casserole. Dang! Ha <laughs> ha! All right, respect. Told you we'd win. Whatever. I'm happy with second place, and so is Samuel. As for the spectacularly worst dish of the night, Congratulations, Pop-Tart and Alex, on your Pop-Tart lasagna. Huh? Really? Ours didn't lose. Ugh! I told you it was a terrible idea, Pop-Tart. Bandit seems to like it. He points to where Bandit has climbed on the table, her snout very deep in the lasagna. What? Bandit! Don't eat that! You'll get sick! Everyone chuckles as Mr. Wiley rushes to shoo Bandit away. She's covered in Pop-Tart jam, peanut butter, and who knows what else. All right. Well, that was fun. Okay. And now that all that wholesomeness is over with, this is the last choice, and then it should branch from here. So, call home first. I hold my phone out to Samuel. You go first. I'm sure your grandfather misses you very much. Okay. Hold on. I almost want to, like... Okay, so what happens? So then I call home. The phone rings four times. On the fifth ring, right before it goes to the answering machine, I hear the sound of it being picked up, and my heart leaps. Hello? Mom? Mom, it's me! Cadence! Is that you? Hmm? Suddenly I feel the temperature plummet. I actually hear it this time. Someone's... It's a woman crying. Oh, that's it! That's all I get! There's definitely a woman crying behind the static. Ooh! I got goosebumps too, Cadence! My veins run cold and goosebumps rise on my skin. My heart pounds frantically in my chest as though trying to escape. I want to run from this place. I want to run far, far away. But my feet stay rooted to the ground. My hands are shaking hard and my palms are so slick with sweat I can barely keep a grip on my phone. Mom? Are you there? Who is this? This isn't funny! We need help! Please! Please help us! Please! The other end of the line has gone totally silent. I hang up. For a few seconds, I stare blankly at the nearest wall while the room around me returns to a normal temperature. What happened? I don't know. I couldn't get through to her. Should we try again? Yes, I'll try calling her again. Maybe I dialed a wrong number by accident? A little unsettled, I go into my phone contacts and carefully select my mom from the list. I wait with bated breath for my mom to pick up. Come on, Mom. Come on! And then she answers. Oh, what was it? What happened? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta do this. Say that again, okay. Oh! I asked if... <gasps> we waited too long. Oh no. I. The air vanishes from my lungs. Everything turns cold. Sweetie, are you still there? Tell her band camp has been extended, but you don't mind. You're having a great time. M M Mr. W Wiley extended the band camp, B but that's okay because I'm having a great time. Oh, that's good to hear. But when will it be over? Cadence? Can you hear me? Tell her not to worry. 
Maybe I'll speak with her when you get home. D -d Don't worry about me, Mom. I'll see you when I get home. My voice is shaking so bad I barely recognize it. I wait for my mom's response, but there's only static. Now say goodbye. Fear flashes through me. Tears leak from my eyes. I manage to gasp out a goodbye despite the sob building in my chest. Bye! My mom! I love you! There's no response. I don't even know if she heard me. Hang up. I do as he says. Give me the cell phone jammer. He points to the black box lying discarded on the floor. Moving slowly, carefully, Samuel bends down, picks it up, and hands it to Mr. Wiley. Then he backs away to stand by my side. There's a long silence. I briefly wonder if that was the last time I'll ever hear my mother's voice. What were her last words to me? I rack my brain, but I can't think of them. My mind has gone blank with panic. Mr. Wiley levels the gun at Samuel and I in turn. It comes to rest on me. Were you doing eeny meeny miny mo on us because rude? Looking down the barrel, I can no longer breathe. The edges of my vision are blurring. All I can see is the gun pointed directly at my face. This never happened. Samuel and I don't move. Do you understand? This never happened. Not a word of what transpired here to anyone else. Bit by bit, his words sink in. I think of my beloved band and my panic heightens. I brace myself for the worst, for the sound of the gun to go off. Instead, Mr. Wiley steps aside and waves us towards the door. We hesitate. Go! At his sharp command, Samuel and I give a start and move towards the door. As I pass by Mr. Wiley, I hear him mutter something under his breath. Remember, this never happened. As soon as we're outside, we break into a sprint. Samuel has a tight hold on my hand. He drags me along as we run, pulling me upright each time I stumble. I'm gasping for air. Tears blind my vision. I want to collapse and cry my heart out, but I also want to get as far away from Mr. Wiley as possible. Time seems to be blurring around me because one second we're at the radio tower and the next we're back at our rooms. Samuel is gripping me tightly to his chest, his entire body shaking. I sob freely, clinging to him. No words pass between us. For a long time we merely hold one another, more terrified than we've ever been in our entire lives. Eventually, Samuel tries to pull away, murmuring something about me needing sleep, but I refuse to let go. He gently tries to pry my fingers loose from his shirt, and I tighten my grip in response, feeling much like a child, yet barely aware of what I'm doing. It doesn't take much for him to give in. Aww. He allows me to come back to his room with him. As we step inside, Doug's booming snores greet us. Any other night, I might have laughed, but laughter seems impossible now. I feel like I will never laugh again. Still trembling, the two of us climb into Samuel's bed. I wrap myself around him, unwilling to let go. He holds me close, and yet it is not close enough. I can find no safety in his arms. Aw, oh, that's sad. We stay like that the rest of the night, holding one another. The only two kids in this camp that know how much danger we are in. Because that's what we are. We're kids. And what can two kids do in the face of a man with a gun, a man who has trapped us here? Eventually, sleep finds me, but it's a sleep plagued with nightmares. However, no nightmare can compare to my new, horrifying reality. Is it reality, though? Okay, so what, what happens after this? Sunday blues, and it's still nighttime. Uh-oh, that can't be good. Dude. Hey. Samuel and I awaken with a start to see Doug staring at us from across the room, presenting us with two thumbs up. Thanks, Doug. Oh, yeah. Nice, Samson. You should have told me you were bringing a girl back last night. I would have gotten lost. I scramble out of the bed, hurriedly adjusting my hair and wiping the drool stain off my chin. Samuel follows. We weren't doing anything. <laughs> right. 
With a sly wink, Doug opens up the door and slides out, leaving us alone in the room. As soon as he's gone, a dark, heavy feeling descends over us. The memories of yesterday come back one by one. How we went from the carefree cooking competition to what happened at the radio tower doesn't seem real. When I speak, my voice is a hoarse whisper. Samuel, what are we going to do now? I don't know, Cadence. Mr. Wiley is insane. What if he loses his mind during practice? What if he shoots someone for something stupid like... Like stepping off with the wrong foot or being a half step away from their dot? The very thought makes me sick to my stomach. We have to act like everything is fine. How can we even begin to? I know, but we have to. For our own sake as well as everyone else's. At least we're in this together. Let's not talk about this here. Let's go to the dock. Okay. We step outside, and I'm surprised to find that the sun has yet to rise. The moon hangs over us. Twinkling stars keep a company, but traces of pink on the horizon promise that the dawn is coming soon, and the stars will soon fade. It's a long walk from the lodge to the lake. Samuel's by my side the entire time, but he does not speak a word. Samuel, I swear if you're gonna break up with her. Because <laughs> you're like, look, I can't do this with the guy with a gun. Which is fair, but like, ugh. I wonder what's going on in his head. Is he trying to think of a solution to this terrifying problem? A way out of here? The dock's wooden boards creak as we step onto them. Samuel stops at the edge of the dock and stares out over the moonlit water. He's as still as its surface. I stand by his side, gazing at the lake with him. For a long moment, neither of us say anything. What do we do, Samuel? He shakes his head and doesn't look at me. I don't know. You said we should act normal, for everyone's sake. How do we do that? He presses his hand to his face. I don't know. I just don't know. Mr. Wiley pointed a gun at us last night. My voice breaks off into a pathetic whimper. I can't even say it out loud. Recalling what happened makes the fear fresh. Mm. I'm scared, Cadence. I don't want to lose anyone. Samuel finally looks at me. My breath catches in my throat. His eyes are filled with pain, more vulnerable than I've ever seen before. I don't want to lose you. You won't. I promise. That's not something you can promise. I could lose you at any moment. There's a hard lump in my throat. I struggle to speak past it, my voice choked and weak. You're not going to lose me. Last spring was hard enough. Now I'm faced with the reality that I might lose my grandpa, and... I'm not ready to face that. I can't. Samuel. I reach for his hand, but he shifts it out of my reach. I don't want to feel anymore. It would be so much easier not to care. Sam. If I keep my distance from now on, I won't have to feel the pain of loss when it inevitably comes. Samuel, I know you're afraid, but we can't afford to think like this right now. We have to focus on the band. We have to come up with a way to get everyone home safely. No. No? I don't want to take that risk. It's too dangerous. I don't want to risk anyone's lives. If anyone got hurt because of me, I would never forgive myself. We can't stay here! Mr. Wiley is too dangerous! I told you no. I would rather just stay silent and do as Mr. Wiley says. I don't want to cause waves. And I don't want to... be with you anymore. Wh what? I can't do this anymore. I don't want to get attached to you only to lose you. I can't take that kind of pain. Just thinking about it... hurts too much. Samuel, please don't give up. Listen to me. 
I'm done listening. Please go, Cadence. I want to be alone now. I'm not leaving you! Please, let's talk about this! If you won't go, then I will. Without so much as a second glance, Samuel turns and walks away, leaving me standing on the dock alone. I watch him melt into the darkness, tears rolling silently down my face. Samuel, how could you give up so easily? How could you leave me? I thought what we had was stronger than this. I guess I was wrong. I sink to the ground, wrapping my arms around my knees and sobbing into them freely. Last night was horrifying, but Samuel was there for me to cling to. So long as we had each other, I thought we would be okay. And now here I sit, alone, watching him walk away from me. I feel so cold. I feel as though the sun will never rise. I want to reach my hand out and grab Samuel's. I want to beg him not to leave me. But he's already too far away. And I cannot find my voice to call him back. Is that where it ends? Ugh. I hate that. I hate that so much. I'd... I'd feel better if one of them had died. Because <laughs> they're just... They're stuck knowing this guy is, like, threatening them, threatening to shoot them. And the one person that you're, like, trying to rely on is just, like, I'm, I'm out and just not going to talk to you anymore. And you have to deal with that as well. Just, oh, <sighs> I mean, I guess you could say there's hope because maybe Cadence can talk to him eventually in the future and they can, like, everybody can still get out of here. But it's just like, just like, plop, end. Uh, the highlight for sure was the woman crying in the background. That is very interesting. I wonder who that could be. I gotta I got get some theorizing going. But anyway, alright, that was tragic. <laughs> One more bad ending to go, guys.